joining me now two great friends of each other. Then we've got Kevin Haig, who is an anti-independence businessman and blogger, and Stuart Cameron, who's from the pro-independence website Wings Over Scotland. Hello to both of you. Hi, John. Stuart Good Campbell, afternoon, John. by the way. Stuart Campbell. Sorry, Stuart. That's, that's our mistake here. OK, Stuart, first of all, then. Tell me about the predictions of oil price and revenue before the referendum and what Nicola Sturgeon said there, that they were in line with everyone else's predictions. Well, I mean, that's that's absolutely correct. I mean, if you look at any any of the forecasts that were made about it, they were, you got forecasts from the IMF, the World Bank, the OBR, the DECC, the OECD, anyone you care to name, were all predicting oil price of between 100 and $110 a barrel by, uh, by this time in at the start of 2016. The fact of the matter is that the price of oil is is one of the most volatile things that there are. And what that means is that people try to predict it a lot. And that means, that again, that you have a very wide range of predictions at any given moment. But in terms of what people were projecting as the the, the medium, the kind of their best guess figures, then the white paper figures were very much slap bang in the middle of that. What were they? Remind everyone listening. Um, again, it was. Uh, I think it was somewhere in the vicinity of $110 a barrel. And then what was the revenue per year to Scotland? Um, I, I don't have the white paper in front of me right now, John. I couldn't tell you. Well, I, I do if it helps. All right, Kevin, you go with that then. So the Scottish Government in the white paper page 75, uh, were forecasting for 2016-17 oil revenue of between 6.8 billion and 7.9 billion. Um, at that time, when the white paper was produced, the OBR, I mean Stuart actually mentioned the OBR as one of his choose any source, uh, were forecasting 2.9 billion. So the low scenario the Scottish Government were using was five billion pounds lower than the OBR's forecast, and the high scenario was seven, sorry, six uh, billion pounds higher than the OBR forecast. And what Stuart has done in answering the question is what the SNP generally try and do, which is when someone asks about revenue forecasts, to immediately talk about price forecasts. I mean, in fact, the OBR were forecasting $97 a barrel, but that's neither here nor there. What matters is the revenue. It's the revenue that pays for public spending. Uh, and to get from oil price to revenue, you have to make ex assumptions about extraction costs and production volumes and prevailing tax rates. Now, the OBR were very clear on this, uh, but I'll, I'll use someone else. You know, Stuart said, you know, take your pick. Well, the OBR clearly said that. The Institute for Fiscal Studies in May 2014 said the main point of disagreement is the different forecast for revenues for North Sea oil and gas used. Our figures, that's the IFS, and the Treasury's figures, are based on the Office for Budget Responsibility. Clue is in the name. If you want to re budget responsibly, you might pay attention to them. The Scottish Government report instead uses their own higher forecasts, and it goes on to detail 7.9 versus 2.9. So when Nicola Sturgeon says the Scottish Government, the forecast, sorry, she said the projections the Scottish Government made were in line with she does a little chuckle, all external projections for prices and for revenues, that is demonstrably untrue. Can we replay that clip then? We weren't going to do this. Can I just replay this clip? Mick's behind. He's, he's pretty hot on this stuff, right? Mick, just replay this clip. Firstly, let me say that the projections the Scottish Government made were in line with all external projections um, yeah, for, for price not, and, and for yeah. revenues. I remember David Cameron coming in the, the final few months of the referendum campaign and saying to people here, vote no for a £200 billion oil bonanza. Stuart, then, do you recognise Kevin Haig's figures? So this is Nicola Sturgeon saying that the predictions were in line. And Kevin Haig is saying it's not just oil prices, it's to do with the revenue. And what he's saying is the revenue being predicted was 2 point something billion by 2. the OBR. But, but the Scottish Government, or the pro-independence arm, if you like, were predicting a much bigger amount, 7 something billion. Do you recognise those numbers? Um, I noticed with interest that Kevin's um, two different figures were, in fact, both based on OBR figures. It's worth pointing out, I think, that when it comes to predictions, the OBR's success rate is up there with a, a drunk man in a blindfold performing open-heart surgery <laughs> with a hammer and chisel. It's described Great lines it's own, no, no, but no, always no, optimistic. Kevin, no, it's Kevin, I don't want interruptions. Please let him make his point. It's described its own track record as, and I quote, pretty lousy. 
Um, the OBR itself recently revised its predicted revenues, not oil price, but revenues, for the period between 2020 and 2040 down. It revised them down from £37 billion mm. to £2 billion. Mm. That's how fluid the OBR's forecasts are. But Last I... March, it down wrote, downgraded its one-year forecast for 2016-17 uh, for down from £2.4 billion I... to £600 million, and now it's predicting, I believe, £100 million. I hate interrupting, and I don't want to interrupt, please. Uh, uh, but I'm just taking us back. To, we're trying to do this thing with fact-check. So someone comes on the air, they, they state a fact, and the fact stated was that the projections at the time by the pro-independence parties were completely in line with almost everybody else's projections. So what Kevin Haig is saying is at the time in the white paper it was saying seven billion a year, but actually the other projections were saying two odd billion a year. Is that right or is that wrong, Stuart? Well, no, what, and what Kevin's done there is, is substitute one particular OBR projection for the, the vast bulk of all of the various <laughs> projections. If, as I said, you can, at any given moment, you could go on... Can you, you give us some on, other revenue projections, then, that you can cite would, revenue, Stuart? Would you mind not interrupting me, Kevin? Thanks so much. At any given moment, you could go on the internet and you could find legitimate projections, <laughs> predictions of the oil price, anywhere between $10 and $200 a barrel. From, and not just from some price. loony, but from any number of legitimate government sources. So if you're, you know, some dog food salesman who wants to cherry pick the worst possible one and obsess on that to the exclusion of all others in order to make the Scottish government look bad, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. The point is the, the predictions that were made in the white paper were in line with the bulk of everyone else's right, predictions, Kevin, both the price and revenue. Stuart. OK, um, Kevin Haig, let Kevin Haig come sure. back. So, so the predictions in the white paper were in line with the bulk of predictions for revenue and oil price. Exactly. Kevin Haig, and, and that, I mean, that, you, you, would, you would have to do another fact check on exactly that statement, and I can tell you it's not true. Um, and, you know, Stuart says, well, I'm just picking the OBR as if that's some random uh, thing to use. Yeah, the Office for Budget Responsibility is established for a very good reason. The UK government relies on the Office for Budget Responsibility for their projections. And the fact that they turned out to be optimistic, as yes, everybody else was on oil, doesn't substitute for the fact that the Scottish government used forecasts at the time that not just the OBR, but that others, and the Institute for Fiscal Studies, yes, they relied on the OBR because they, as the UK government do, see that as being the most credible forecast for oil and gas. Now, of course, it's highly volatile. That's the whole point. And they were, in fact, optimistic, as they have always been. So the fact that the Scottish government chose to be more optimistic than the always over-optimistic OBR to the tune of £5 billion a year shows that it was a false prospectus. That they, were, they were gambling the future of our country on, uh, on oil. Stuart. Um, again, we, all that we're doing here is coming back to the fact that Kevin is, is obsessing over the OBR's projections over and above everyone else. What other if ones you look were there, then? Give us another. OK, um, the Department of Energy and Climate Change in 2013 projected, projected a range of oil prices for prices. 2015. Prices. Between $92.4 a barrel and $131.7 a barrel. Now, that is a very, very wide range of predictions, and they were still out by a factor of three from where it is now. I the think, point I think is, the you can cannot you're just predict price the price of oil. It. OK, but we'll, we'll leave that one. You're not going to agree. Um, so that, let's do the second fact stated by the first Mr Nicol Sturgeon. A text in 80295, what do you make of this? This is the one about Scotland and declining oil revenues and how this is going to affect Scotland. I've said our, our growth in onshore revenues over the next few years is, is projected to significantly outstrip the decline in offshore revenues. And our deficit, even on the most pessimistic projections, mm. it will fall every year over uh, the, the remainder of this decade. OK, now, uh, if my head gets this right, what she's saying is that we can generate income through non-oil tax raising, as in income tax, VAT and corporation tax from stuff that happens on the mainland. And that is going to be more than the drop in oil revenue. So the drop in oil revenue we've, we've established, have we, roughly, is if it was predicted to be 7.9 billion-ish, it's down to about 
two billion ish. Is no, that 100, correct? 100 million now, according to the OBR, the year million. we're in. Okay, well, all right. So, can somebody help me here and check this fact? Um, well, I'm happy to have a stab. Go on, then. John. Um, what I mean, what we do on on Wings Over Scotland is that we try to source opinion and fact from uh, people who are hostile to our argument, because I think you'll generally find that that is a more kind of you know people are more inclined to believe you if you're quoting the other side's figures, and this. Uh, comes from a from a, uh, a highly suspect source, the BBC, who recently reported that the Scottish economy will continue to pick up pace despite the lower oil price, and that came from data from the Fraser of Allender Institute and Professor Brian Ashcroft, who I don't believe is anyone's idea of a of a an SNP apologist. Okay. And he what he said he specifically said that it might that it would the the beneficial effects of the oil price falling would outweigh the damage done by the oil industry. Do you have the numbers the for that, Stuart? Falling. Can you um, help he, people here and, and back up Nicola Sturgeon's statement with numbers? Well, I'm not an economist, but what Professor Ashcroft suggested was that he predicted a net gain of jobs and a net growth in the economy. A net so, growth in income to the country? Yeah, he said growth might actually benefit if the income effects of a lower oil price on increased household spending, investment and net exports are large. And what he went on to do was predict that they would be. Kevin Higg. OK. The, the, first of all, the maths here is pretty simple. I know Stuart isn't big on numbers, but the, our onshore tax base at the moment is £50 billion. So that's how much revenue Scotland generates in tax. Uh, if we're looking to find... Uh, you know, eight billion pounds, seven point nine. Let's call it eight. That's sixteen percent increase in onshore tax revenue. That's how much our onshore tax base would have to grow to close that gap. Now, Dr. Gary Gillespie, chief economist, uh, office of the chief economic advisor to the Scottish government, uh, projects two percent GDP growth. So you know, you do the maths. It's eight nine years at that level of growth to close that gap. And so, of course, you know, yes, that gap will get closed by real GDP growth. The relevant point here, and it was, it's consistent with what Professor Brian Ashcroft was saying, is not closing that gap versus where we are today, but where we are versus the rest of the UK. So in the context of the continuing debate about whether it's separation or full fiscal autonomy, the question is, how much better off are we by pooling and sharing with the rest of the UK? Now, we are, you know, demonstrably about £8 billion a year better off at the moment. Over those eight years, it would take 2% real growth to close that gap. Of course, the rest of the UK economy would be growing as well. And the rest of the UK economy is more exposed to the upsides of the declining oil price than the Scottish economy is exposed to the downsides. But Just it, ask okay, those people in it, Aberdeen. But is Nicola Sturgeon, in your opinion, right or wrong to say that... The, if, if the economy grows, then the onshore revenue will more than make up for the loss of the offshore revenue. Well, she's, she's right, because it's a statement of the, of the blindingly obvious. Over, uh, as long as you have real GDP growth, eventually the growth in onshore revenue will get to a stage where you've grown by whatever we've lost in oil revenue. The point is, first of all, you know, we've had debates about what a generation is. Let's have a debate about what a few years is. At current rates of growth, projected rates of growth by the chief economist of, of the Scottish government, uh, it would take eight to nine years. Now, she did say significantly outstripped, so, you know. Um, but yes, if a few years is ten years, if you're happy to have no real terms increases in public expenditure during that time and if you ignore the fact that relative to the rest of the UK we would be all we'd be doing is is holding that deficit gap that we already exist then yes it's true it's Stuart. not you know it's not as it's not as wrong as the statement about oil forecasts okay last word to you then Stuart you you both agree on this one it certainly appears so yes yeah. so I'm, I, I I kind of tuned out during during Kevin's big ramble there I'm not sure what his point was, because we both seem to agree, as Nicola Sturgeon does and Brian Ashcroft does, that overall the oil price falling will benefit the Scottish economy more than it harms it. And the UK fact, economy. Will, the UK uh, no, economy. Professor, no, Professor Ashcroft was specifically talking about the Scottish economy. I will, I will quote him. The oil industry is very, very important and in many ways the jewel in the Scottish economy, but the Scottish economy is much bigger than the oil industry and there are lots of areas that will benefit from the lower oil prices. So, uh, as far as I can tell, we are all agreed, having checked that fact. That, Although that, that quote what the First doesn't Minister actually back up correct. what you just asserted, but never mind. Okay, thank you, Kevin, Stuart.